1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Pen flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. All right, 19 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You know, uh, a lot of the, uh, the the political advisors were advising us to vote early because we were all afraid that there was going to be a lot of rain uh, tomorrow on Election Day, and that could impede your um, going out to vote. And that could still be true with an 80% chance of rain today and tomorrow. So, And don't forget, tomorrow is Election Day. Tomorrow is election day. Some of the races will be decided tomorrow. Otherwise, it's known. Otherwise, though, some of them are, are primaries. I'm not really sure about the uh, the uh, county commission seat. Danielle Doty would know. She is in the studio right now. She is a, uh, a member of Blessed Trinity Catholic Church, a member of the Republican Executive Committee, a member of the Republic Women Ocala Marian Federate. Oh, we know those ladies. Oh my okay. gosh! Oh my gosh! Good to uh, good to see you, and and you're running for the District Three seat for the Marion County Commission. Just making sure I got your picture. There you are. Good morning. How are you? You got up early to be with us, huh? Good morning. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. You, you don't normally get up this time of the morning, do you? Well, usually, yes. Yeah, oh, you do. Oh, you do. <laughs> yes. So you're running for uh, the District Three seat in the County Commission, and uh, t- tell me why? Why are you running? Oh, there's many reasons. Um. The first reason and what's different about my candidacy is that I was an employee of the Marion County Board of County Commissioners. Oh, really? Okay. <clears throat> yes, okay. from May of 2014 to January of this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I resigned from my position in January so that I could be full-time on the campaign trail. But while I was there, I was the business and communications liaison. Okay. Right, uh, right there in Marion County administration. So I worked with uh, the senior administrative staff. I worked with the commissioners. I, I got to see a lot and I got to hear a lot. Um, and I've said on the campaign trail, uh, some of it was good and some of it was bad. And, and is the bad stuff why you chose to run? Yes. To fix the, the parts that you didn't like? Yes. I'm not someone that sits on the sidelines. And there have been a number of issues uh, that have arisen, come before the commission. Have you ever attended a county commission meeting? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, so you're familiar with the auditorium. Uh-huh. Uh, when there's a, a hot issue, the auditorium can get filled up tons of people right right and uh there's been some hot issues and isn't it weird which ones are hot though it is right. it's very interesting right. Right. and um i've seen a lot of people uh, leave there very angry um feeling very disrespected and a, a big part of government a, a big part of uh, i feel being a county commissioner um representing people is listening and that goes with the job. Oh, that's, so that you, sits really well with a lot of people. Well, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. You have a two-minute uh, time frame. You're, you're you're condescended to sometimes, right? Am I using the right word? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you really want to be a commissioner and you want this job, I believe that there are a number of right reasons that you can do it. Okay. Um, right now, I think we have some people that don't do it for the right reasons and are too self-serving and when you are like that it's very easy to forget why you're there it's easy to forget about the the person who chose to get up on a tuesday and head down there at nine o'clock because they felt so passionately about providing two or three minutes of public comment that go. person left their home they could yeah, have sat there right, absolutely you know they're kind of interested they could have watched it on tv yeah um, they could have looked it up on their computer um, but they got up they drove down there they f- they feel like they have something to say and it's every Marion County citizen's right to do that. And when someone takes their time to do that, I feel that they at least deserve the respect like of, that, yeah. let's sit up, let's pay so attention, let's look you in the eye, let's be respectful to you and whatever your comments are. And knowing that sometimes there's a lot of citizens that come and they're not happy. <laughs> and they're looking right yeah. at the commissioners right. and saying, you know, you're crazy or <laughs> whatever it is. But you have to sit there and you have to listen. and. That's just something that's really important to me. I think that people's voices deserve to be heard. And what I've heard on the campaign trail um, for more than a year, and and we can talk about that, you know, in a minute, but I've been on the campaign trail longer than anyone else. And people just want to be heard. They want to feel like those people are representing 
them. I've often thought when, when somebody is cut short because they've reached the, the ending of their time frame that it's it's a little bit pr- impractical to say somebody can go on and on and on. That doesn't make sense either. Right. But at the same time, I don't know, if maybe somebody could say to the group, hey, before we get started, look, we really appreciate you being here and we want you to have your two minutes, but two minutes isn't much, but please don't feel offended by the two minutes. It's it's across the board. Everybody gets two minutes or whatever you decide, whatever time limit. Right. So my question to you is this. If, if you, if, if there's a decision to be made and as a, County Commissioner, you've kind of made your mind up, but now you have a a public gathering and you have people opposing your position. Maybe they don't know it yet because you haven't Mm -hmm. voted on it. Do you engage in debate with them or do you just, or do you listen to them? And are you willing to say, you know what, maybe I'm the wrong one? In in my experience, I I believe the way they have the rules set up is it's fair and appropriate. If you're an individual, uh, you get a few minutes. If you're there representing a group of people, you're allowed to have five minutes. And uh, they do broadcast that in the beginning so that people know it's also yeah. written there on the agenda. Um, but people sometimes you need to be reminded and you know there is a, a little buzzer. Um, and I will say uh, whoever the chairman has been, you know, has, has tried, but when people start going over, you know, you're politely trying to nudge them. I will say this about uh, Marion County government and in comparison to other places, the same rules for public comment don't apply in every county. So there are counties that do it very, very differently. Um, Marion County actually provides more than one opportunity during the meeting to provide public comment. So they have a section in the very beginning, which is right after the roll call and the introductions. And then they also have another section at the very end after commissioner comments. So there are two opportunities for anyone that has showed up to stand up Mm -hmm. and say, anything they want during those two periods. I know there are other local governments where they might only provide one opportunity. And if you're not there, if the citizen isn't there during that time... How do you you know if it's not somebody who was planted there? (laughs) And you know what I mean? And they've got money that uh, maybe favors that have been offered to them and say, hey, would you speak up against this or whatever? You don't. Yeah. You don't. Anybody can say anything. They can they can read a letter. They can speak from their heart. Yeah. Um, but but it is their their right to do that. Um, so th- any, anything in uh, specifically that you would like to um, a pr- uh, what do I want to say, Robin? Uh, achieve it, once you were elected? Would you want to change the infrastructure or or build roads anywhere or? or the do, do something about the the wages for the like the county commission uh, county employees yeah yeah i think all of those sound great larry why why aren't you running <laughs> i would not any, any, anybody can say we need to raise wages i, I just don't, i don't know exactly how to do that though right right well i'm sure you've heard from many other candidates that the number one priority this year uh, for most of us is definitely public safety yeah and i'm sure you've covered that on your show um so i think the biggest priority for me as a commissioner on several fronts in the public safety arena is to keep working um, with our public safety personnel and our first responders. Um, on the one side, we have Marion County Fire Rescue. Those are Marion County employees. And although they, they recently signed a deal and they negotiated with the union um, after a very long amount of time, um, my personal opinion is that that was just a nice way to put a bow on things mm-hmm. um, prior to the election. But, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. It's not just about their wages. There are other pieces of that program, um, a strategy for long-term funding and how we're going to address critical needs. You know, the sales tax just passed uh, in March, and so county commissioners are really going to be overseeing that process. And that's something that I would want to be watching very, very closely. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you remember um, it passed when we had our primary, our presidential preference primary in March, um, 55% of the people voted for the sales tax. and um, But that means 45 didn't. Right, right, right. And so th- those 45%, I've talked about this a lot of the campaign trail too, um, you know, they're going to be watching. And I think it's important that we say, 
you know, that $160 million plus dollars, um, it's going to go for improving our roads, it's going to go for uh, public safety equipment and capital needs. Um, but the way that that's spent, you know, which one gets to go first? Is it, do we yeah, get a road yeah. project first? Um, you know, what what's the number one priority in public safety, um, capital equipment? Um, that's going to take cooperation and coordination between many, many parties. And I think it's very, very important that citizens, even if they didn't agree uh, with the tax and they didn't vote for it, that they can look to the board and the county staff to say, okay, it looks like they're on track with this. It looks like they, they are spending that money wisely and maybe we can start to get what we really need with those additional dollars. Um, the last thing I would say with public safety is we're gonna have a new sheriff. And that's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. um, what has happened with the sheriff's office, without you know getting into those weeds, um, is critical for this community. Um, you know, many people feel we have a, a stain on the community now, and it shouldn't be that way because our law enforcement personnel are wonderful, and they're out there still every day yeah, right. doing Absolutely. the job, yeah. risking their lives, you know, as well as our fire rescue, our paramedics is and our EMTs. But we need to make sure that the Board of County Commissioners has a better relationship with any, the sheriff going forward. Any waste that you think you should uh, address? Any, any wasteful spending? Not, not that it's, you know, intentionally wasteful, but do you see anything that could be cleaned up a little bit? I do, I do. Yeah. I'm not going to say there's, you know, millions and millions everywhere. Um, I am familiar with the county budget because I did work there right. for right. a year and a half. Um, one of the things uh, several of us candidates have brought up on the campaign trail is uh, something called our compressed natural gas program. Yeah. Um, have you heard about that? Yes, yes. Um, commissioners had a workshop on it earlier this year. Um, not much seemed to be done, but, you know, with gas prices uh, dropping the way that they have recently, it just seemed like that would have been an opportunity to renegotiate negotiate that contract. I'm not really sure that it was written in the best interests of Marion County. It's a public-private partnership, um, and those can work very well and be beneficial. Um, but in this case, I think it, I think that's an area of and, waste. Uh, and, and then there are uh, private businesses, there are organizations in Marion County that are always vying for government funds. How would you approach them? Yes. Well, we just heard about a big one, right, with AutoZone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I spoke about this recently. Uh, when I worked at the county, um, part of my job with economic development, I, I got to work on some of these projects. I manage our economic development grants. And uh, there was actually one occasion where I uh, was able to go and represent the county at a meeting with some of the AutoZone officials and the national site selector. Um, so I've seen that process from the inside. And I think that's a very valuable experience that I would bring to being a commissioner. Um, big incentive plan for AutoZone. And so yeah. I've heard people in the community argue whether or not, you know, should we be giving right. that much to these huge, uh, you know, national companies? And, you know, you read in the paper, the return is, you know, I think about 10 million a year. They're touting in um, well, economic reinvestment. In that case, it worked, right? Hundreds of jobs. Yeah. And so you say, well, you know, if Marion County and the city of Ocala, you know, put out a million, two million, you're getting back, you know, tons of jobs, increasing your tax base, um, you know, getting a $49 million facility to come to Ocala when, you know, they had several other locations. And I can tell you that site selector, <laughs> that was it just very eye-opening to, you know, we're around the table, representatives from the community. And he's basically like, tell me what you're going to do for me. And it's like, if you don't, if it, this is it, we're AutoZone. And back then, you know, this was a secret I've been keeping for part of my job. You know, you you can't talk about those right, things. All right, the projects right. have code names. Yeah. <laughs> and so until it was announced, I've known this for the past year and a half that it was AutoZone. Um, but very interesting to see somebody with that much power and authority representing a national uh, company yeah. like that saying, well, you know, we're so either going to go to this place or another state. I had no idea it was in, in the works that long. That was, it was interesting It to was a very that. long project, yes. Danielle, I, I know... Um, I, you want to make a, a pitch for yourself so let me give you we've con gone on the 10 minutes is already in there so okay but but don't stop just go another minute if you could tell people how to learn more about you websites that kind of thing okay sure okay right. my website is uh, vote danielle d-a-n-i-e-l-l-e dodie d-o-t-y dot com and they can learn more about me my campaign my professional career and my family 
I love my family very much. Um, very proud to be married to my husband, Chris. He is a United States Marine Corps veteran. I read that in your, in yes, your bio, yeah. yeah. Yes, and uh, we have two sons. We live in beautiful Ocala. We came here in uh, 2008 after I was recruited by the CEO of an organization called Kids Central. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Central? yeah, sure. Yes, I I grew up in Citrus County. I had been living over there, and I had worked with uh, the CEO. And she said, "I want you to be part of my team," and Aww. that's how we came to Ocala. And I was the director of community development and the public information officer there, um, five county area, and I say no better experience uh, with that position and then actually working for the county um, and I also have my bachelor's degree in public relations I feel that I'm very well equipped to be a, a really um, engaged commissioner and listen to the people of Marion County and I feel that's that's what they're desperately wanting uh, we en enjoyed getting to know you thank you for coming thank in to do, to do this with us I know it was a uh, kind of a curveball for you to uh, get up this early no problem uh, so the website again vote Danielle Doty D-O-T-Y is how Daniel spells her last name dot com vote Danielle Doty dot com and we'll put this this video on Facebook and YouTube and Anybody who wants to promote it uh, is welcome to share it any way you want, including yourself, Danielle, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. We will take a little break, and we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Monday, intervals of clouds and sun, breezy in the afternoon with a shower and thunderstorm around.